Hey folks, it is October 28, Wednesday, and welcome once again to the Daily Word in the Crisis. Uh, You know, as we've moved closer to Election Day, my heart and my spirit have become increasingly troubled. I can hardly watch the news anymore without becoming sick at my stomach. Recently, I prophesied a Trump victory, followed by a time of economic resurgence, And I pray that happens, but there will be violence as well in reaction to it. And everybody knows it. If Biden wins, the right will, 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 well, this is a fact. If Biden wins, the right will not respond violently as has the radical left in recent days. Because that's not who we are. And that should tell you something about the spirit behind the push to the left. If Biden wins, there'll be significant tax increases There will be economic collapse. There will be job losses as companies are once more driven out of the country because of increased taxes. And there will be erosion of cherished freedoms over time. These are the choices that lie before us. And when I say that I've prophesied a Trump victory, and I have, let me qualify that by saying that while prophetic people should aspire to 100% accuracy, and while my own track record has been significantly solid, We are fresh out of Elijah's, fresh out of Elisha's, fresh out of Isaiah's and Jeremiah's and apostles at the level of John the Beloved. The only infallible prophetic words are recorded in Scripture. I hope that those of us who've prophesied the president's victory have heard God accurately, but if we've missed it, I pray we have the humility to openly admit it and ask forgiveness of the body of Christ. So here's a big part of what's making me sick in my heart and my spirit. Whatever whatever happened to honor and dignity in this nation? Whatever happened to respect for one another, even in differences of opinion? What has happened to truth? I can't turn on the news without hearing a stream of lies poured out in political campaigns, as well as through ads and commentators that I know are lies told simply to cause the kind of emotional reactions in people that will will win their votes. We're drowning in lies during this campaign. A Supreme Court Justice, Amy Coney Barrett, probably the most honorable and godly nominee put forward in my lifetime. What a clean spirit she carries. She was legally nominated, legally confirmed. In a bitter and hateful reaction, the opposing party vows revenge calling the process corrupt. Well, you know, maybe it was hastily done. Perhaps it was insensitively pushed. Perhaps even, perhaps it was even a political move. But corrupt? How? Nothing was done under the table. Nothing was done illegally. The bitterness runs so deep that liberal mainstream news agencies wouldn't even cover her swearing in. A scandal erupts around former Vice President Joe Biden's family's shady business dealings while in office. And that's substantiated by hard evidence on a laptop and by eyewitness testimony from a former business associate, but only one major news agency covers it. They don't want you to know because they want to control what you think. They want to, they, they want to influence how you vote. So they cover for the candidate they prefer. That's not news reporting. That's not a free press. It's what a political propaganda machine does. The big social media platforms suppress and censor anything that doesn't align with their leftist liberal views, even when the news like the current Biden scandal is well verified and comes from one of the oldest and most reputable newspapers in the nation. They don't want you to know. This looks and sounds to me Like fascism, not the free exchange of ideas that characterize a healthy democracy. That's thought control. So the power of the big lie turns the minds and hearts of millions, shaping their perceptions, shaping their opinions, and and shaping their votes, because an intellectually lazy and emotionally driven population refuse to examine facts to think them through. They simply believe the propaganda they're being fed as it makes them feel something. Listen to what the prophet Isaiah had to say two and three quarters of a millennia ago 
about the situation in ancient Israel. It fits the situation today in an almost eerie way. Isaiah 59, start at verse 11. All of us growl like bears and moan sadly like doves. We hope for justice, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far from us. Well, where are the arrests for the violent looters and arsonists in our cities? Where are the arrests for those who deface and destroy monuments? Where are the arrests for those who burn businesses owned by the very people the protesters claim to be protesting for? I've heard of arrests. Most of them get released. Verse 12. For our transgressions are multiplied before you, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and we know our iniquities, transgressing and denying the Lord and turning away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving in and uttering from the heart lying words. Well, I want to suggest to you that there's a spirit of pathological lying hovering over the land. By that I mean that the liars have so seared their consciences that they've they've convinced themselves that they're speaking the truth, even when their lies are, are exposed by hard facts. Colleges and universities that once cultivated free exchange of ideas and healthy debate now actively persecute those who don't agree and actively shut out those who would present ideas contrary to the narrative of the left. Oppression. Revolt. Verse 14. Justice is turned back, and righteousness stands far away, for truth has stumbled in the street, and uprightness cannot enter. Well, people, these are the issues at stake in this election. I'm troubled that I hear so many people ready to vote on the basis of their feelings about the personalities of the candidates. Well, yes, Trump is brash, sometimes harsh, and I've prayed for a change in his character that would change his rhetoric. But the record of his achievements is stellar. Before COVID, we had historically low unemployment. Black and Hispanic unemployment hit the lowest levels in history. Trump pushed through prison reforms that favored black and Hispanic communities primarily that previous presidents had promised but never delivered. Trump has brokered peace in the Middle East with multiple enemy nations who are now normalizing relationships with Israel, something that previous administrations said was impossible. Previous administrations promised to move our embassy in Israel to Jerusalem, Israel's rightful ancient capital. But Trump actually did it. He's favored and supported the church and has been unafraid and unashamed to pray in Jesus' name and speak of faith in God openly. Trump has a racially mixed cabinet. He's appointed the first black man in history to head a major branch of the military. He's appointed women to top positions on his staff. And the list just goes on. So here's my exhortation that I've repeated many times. You may think Biden to be a kind man who could unite the nation. He won't. The radical left who support him and drive him will divide us as never before. You might think Trump's character to be brash and insulting, but I'm pleading with you all to vote the fruit. Examine the party platforms and ask which party platform best represents your Christian values. Vote the party, not the man. When you vote for the man, you empower the party. Look past the personalities. Look at the fruit. Look at the philosophy that drives the party. And I would suggest that any Christian who supports a party that supports the holocaust of the murder of unborn children will have to answer to God for it. You might not think that issue to be important enough to determine your vote, but realize that after hundreds of years of prophetic warnings in order to stop the murder of the children as Israel sacrificed their children by fire to Baal Molech, God utterly destroyed Judah and Jerusalem and sent the population into exile for 70 years. Please think, pray, and vote, vote, Vote.